Hi, I'm Greg Solgit, and I welcome you to Unlike This Video Log. Today I want to talk about Eastern versus Western medicine. Uh, now these are terms we hear all the time, and I don't want to talk about the pros and the cons of Eastern and Western medicine, because there are plenty of places where you can find that on the net. Uh, instead I want to talk about the terms. The terms is, is really where I think everything starts just going wrong. When we say Eastern versus Western, it makes it sound like they're separate but equal. You know, one can't be better than the other. No culture is better than the other. They're just different. But, and, and when we say Western medicine in general, what I think most people, it's fair to say, think about is sort of invasive medicine and it requires lots of technical, expensive equipment. Whereas Eastern medicine may be seen as more holistic um, and, you know, let's say herbs and a lining of chi. Okay, fine. But, are these really comparing like to like? These are traditional medicines. This is modern medicine, right? So shouldn't we put these down here? So done this way, you're kind of comparing apples to oranges. In fact, then if you want to compare Eastern to Western medicine, what you should be doing is comparing alignment of chi and certain herbs with the burning of witches and the applications of leeches all over your body. Okay, now we're now you're making a comparison that seems fair. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying that traditional medicines can never be effective. Okay, after hundreds of years of development and evidence base, for example, we know that leeches can be used medically in modern medicine. If somebody's got a reattached limb that is not able to get rid of excess blood flow, for example, leeches are wonderful. So we do use them. And the same way with Chinese, or I'm sorry, with Eastern medicine, you know, how many herbs have, have led to various drugs that we use? You know, foxglove, which is a deadly toxin if used in just the right amount from the digitalis plant, has led to a whole series of heart drugs, for example, that are very useful. Now, I think to make any progress in comparing Eastern and Western medicine, it helps to get the, the, what we're talking about straight to begin with um, for several reasons. But one of which is that if I were talking to a Chinese doctor and I asked her, what's her specialty? And she said, oh, you know, I'm a cardiac surgeon. I would say, oh, well, you must work with herbs and chi alignment then. I, I would expect her to take some pretty serious offense. What do you mean chi alignment? I'm a heart surgeon. Turns out, I do invasive heart surgery using really fancy equipment because it's modern medicine. The implication of Eastern versus West when you don't talk about traditional versus modern is that the East has no modern medicine. I'm sure if you're getting a triple bypass in Shanghai, they are not relining your chi and sticking you full of herbs. They may use digitalin, right? They may use an herb that has developed from the traditional medicine that we now know to be effective through hundreds of years of testing and evidence-based medicine. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, you've taken a few moments of your day to actually listen to what I have to say, and I respect you for that. If you want to hear more, please click the subscribe button. Thank you.